this is kind of my lame uh, attempt at replicating Stubblefield's electric battery. Um, this is a iron bolt uh, wrapped uh, with a coil that is um, composed of uh, insulated copper wire and steel wire that's exposed. Um, now the uh, the starting points of the wire, the copper wire and the steel wire, are not connected to anything. They're just um, left hanging here. And then the uh, the output side would be the other ends, steel being negative, copper being positive. So the, the copper and the steel do not make a connection at all. These are like two independent coils. And uh, Stubblefield recommends this be immersed in water or in wet dirt, like an earth battery. So here we are immersing in water. And you'll notice, oh, and I, I attached a capacitor here, really big capacitor, just so we could observe. Um, uh, this is a, I'm sorry, I'm trying to rotate this around here. This is a 16 volt, 3,300 microfarads. Connect this up again. Okay, so there's uh, not a lot of potential difference here. Um, I think one thing that Stubblefield's patent doesn't mention is the copper. The copper wire needs to um, make a connection down into the water or into the electrolyte so that you have both the copper and the steel touching. So I'm bending this down now so that it touches the wire, uh, the water. And look at this. We have charging. So as so this is just a standard uh, battery, really, with just you know two dissimilar metal, metals, copper and steel, or copper and uh, iron, either way, um, in an electrolyte. So that'll pr produce electricity. But what Stubblefield has going on here is a coil. So as it produces an, a potential difference, um, you have sort of the additional benefit of a magnetic field being created on that iron bolt. And Stubblefield uh, made a telephone system out of this, which was pretty amazing. He, he was sort of one of the first to uh, demonstrate wireless broadcast of voice through the earth using his technology. So I don't know how Far this will charge up. I'm guessing it'll go up to about no more than a half volt, and then kind of stabilize there. Now, because this is kind of a big cap, it'll take a little while to charge it up. Now, one thing I can try is um, if I remove this from the water. Since there's no longer a connection through electrolyte, charging stops. That makes sense. Put this back in the water. Now we have an electrolyte. And the charging resumes. Now I noticed that some people are uh, taking earth batteries and connecting them to uh, the Jewel Thief circuit to run LEDs. Um, I think. I might try that if I get a chance. Uh, the Stubblefield battery is probably a little bit more elegant earth battery. Um, uh, I probably need to construct something bigger than this and or maybe many of them to create a slightly larger current. Okay, I got another idea here. So. Um, Imagine that the planet is uh, surrounded by um, uh, weather systems that are pr producing lightning bolts uh, striking the Earth all over the place, and there's sort of these spikes and magnetic field uh, fluctuations. So the question is, 
uh, with this stubble field earth battery, if I were to take this magnet and sort of move it around near this bolt, would it make things go faster? In terms of charging, I'm not observing anything, but um, certainly there's uh, the, certainly the coil would have uh, some induced current. And that would be in the form of alternating current. It is uh, 3.36 p.m. Perhaps I'll come back in a bit.